There we go. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to morning prayer from the Episcopal Church of the Atonement in Chicago. Today is Thursday in the fifth week of Lent, and today we commemorate um, Thomas Ken. And I will read uh, uh, parts of his um, hagiography in just a minute. Um, first of all, some page numbers. We today our Psalms. Our Psalm is Psalm 105, both parts, and that begins on page 738 of the prayer book. Um, the canticles are Canticle 8, the Song of Moses on page 85, and Canticle 19, the Song of the Redeemed on page 94. Um, the Apostles' Creed begins on page 96, followed immediately by the Lord's Prayer and um, Suffrages A. I'll give other page numbers as we make our progress through morning prayer. Um, Let's look at Thomas Ken. He was a bishop with a date of 1711. And I'm just going to read um, some parts of this. Thomas Ken was born in England in 1637. Throughout his life, he was both rewarded and punished for his integrity. And there's a couple of examples of um, how he stood up to royalty. And then skipping down, hold on, I'm letting some people in. Um, I'll skip down to the first, second paragraph. In 1688, when Charles's successor, James II, tried to undermine the authority of the Church of England and restore Roman Catholicism, Ken was one of seven bishops who refused to read the King's Declaration of Indulgence, which offered toleration to Protestant nonconformists and to Roman Catholics. The seven, seven bishops were sent to the Tower, but were acquitted in the courts. <clears throat> and became popular heroes. After the revolution of 1688, however, Ken's conscience did not permit him to swear allegiance to William of Orange, who became King William III. As a non-juror, Ken was deprived of his see. Ken's conscience would not let him rest in his disagreement with others of the non-juring party over various matters troubled him for the rest of his life. <clears throat> he deplored the non-juror schism. And after the accession of Queen Anne in 1702, he made his peace with the Church of England, encouraging his fellow non-jurors to return to their parish churches in 1710. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Ken announced his intention to do the same, but died on March 19, 1711, before doing so. A man of deep piety, Ken was the author of several religious books, which were immensely popular in the 18th century. Um, I'll skip to the last sentence. One of the most compelling products of his piety. Wait a minute. One of the most compelling products of his piety in his pen is the prayer. Our God, amidst the deplorable division of your church, let us never widen its breaches, but give us universal charity to all who are called by your name. Deliver us from the sins and errors, the schisms and heresies of the age. Give us grace daily to pray for the peace of your church and earnestly to seek it and to excite all who can to praise and love you. Through Jesus Christ, our one Savior and Redeemer. That is Thomas Ken, Bishop in 1711. May the Lord be glorified in his holy ones. Okay, I have lit my candle and I invite you to do the same. It signifies God's presence wherever we are praying. I think we can begin. Let's take a moment, take a breath to center ourselves and then we'll begin morning prayer. <laughs> you 
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold. <clears throat> Let us say the Venite on page 82. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. <clears throat> the sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Harden not your hearts, as your forebears did in the wilderness at Meribah, and on that day at Massa when they tempted me. They put me to the test, though they had not, they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, This people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. <clears throat> so I swore in my wrath, They shall not enter into my rest. <clears throat> The Lord is full of compassion <clears throat> and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Psalms 105, parts two, one and two, beginning on page 738. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make deed, known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. And speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant. The promise he made for a thousand generations. The covenant he made with Abraham the oath that he swore to Isaac, which he established as a statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, To you will I give the land of Canaan to be your allotted inheritance. When they were few in number, of little account, and sojourners in the land, wandering from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another, he let no one oppress them and rebuked kings for their sake, saying, Do not touch my anointed and do my prophets no harm. <clears throat> then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them. Joseph, who was sold as a slave, they bruised his feet in fetters. His neck they put in an iron collar until his prediction came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He set him as a master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions to instruct his princes according to his will and to teach his elders wisdom 
Israel came into Egypt and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies, whose heart he turned so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They worked his signs among them and portents in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and it grew dark. But the Egyptians rebelled against his words. He turned their waters into blood and caused their fish to die. Their land was overrun by frogs <coughs> and the very chambers of their kings. He spoke and there came swarms of insects and gnats within all their borders. He gave them hailstones instead of rain and flames of fire throughout their land. He blasted their vines and their fig trees and shattered every tree in their country. He spoke and the locusts came and young locusts without number, which ate up all the green plants in their land and devoured the fruit of their soil. He struck down the firstborn of their land, the first fruits of all their strength. He led out his people with silver and gold. In all their tribes, there was not one who, that stumbled. Egypt was glad of their going because they were afraid of them. He spread out a cloud for a covering and a fire to give light in the night season. They asked and coils appeared. And he satisfied them with bread from heaven. He opened the rock and water flowed. So the river ran in dry places. For God remembered his holy word and Abraham his servant. So he led forth his people with gladness his chosen with shouts of joy. He gave his people the lands of the nations and they took the fruit of others' toil that they might, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Exodus um, in chapter 7, verse 25 through chapter 8, verse 19. Seven days passed after the Lord had struck the Nile. Then the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, thus says the Lord, let my people go so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go, I will plague your whole country with frogs. The river shall swarm with frogs. They shall come up into your palace, into your bedchamber and your bed, and into the houses of your officials and of your people, and into your ovens and your kneading bowls. The frogs shall come up on you and on your people and on all your officials. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, stretch out your hand with your staff over the rivers, the canals, the pools, and make frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the hands of e waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. But the magicians did the same by their secret arts and brought frogs up on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said, <coughs> excuse me a moment. <clears throat> then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said, pray to the Lord to take away the frogs from me and my people, and I will let the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, Kindly tell me when I am to pray to you and for your officials and for your people that the frogs may be removed from you and your houses may be left only in and be left only in the Nile. And he said, Tomorrow, 
Moses said, as you say, so that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. The, the frogs shall leave you and your houses and your officials and your people. They shall be left only in the Nile. Then Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried out to the Lord concerning the frogs that he had brought upon Pharaoh. And the Lord did as Moses requested. The frogs died in the houses, the courtyards, and the fields, and they gathered them up, they gathered them together in heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was a respite, he hardened his heart and would not listen to them, just as, just as the Lord had said. <clears throat> then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the earth so that it may become gnats throughout the whole land of Egypt. And they did so. Aaron stretched out his hand with his staff and struck the dust of the earth and gnats came on humans and animals alike. All the dust of the earth turned into gnats throughout the whole land of Egypt. The magicians tried to produce gnats by their secret arts, but they could not. They were gnats on both humans and animals. And the magicians said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he would not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. <clears throat> Here ends the reading. Let us say together Canticle 8, the Song of Moses on page 85. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God, and I will praise him, the God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariot of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand. The earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession, the resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from um, 2 Corinthians in chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. Now, if the ministry of death chiseled in, chiseled in letters on stone tablets came in glory so that the people of Israel could not gaze on Moses' face because of the glory of his face, a glory now set aside, how much more will the ministry of the Spirit come in glory? For there, if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, much more does the ministry of justification abound in glory. Indeed, what once had glory has lost its glory because of the greater glory. For if what was set aside came through glory, much more has the permanent come in glory. Since then, we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of this, with un 
and all of us with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Here ends the reading. Let us say together the song of the redeemed, um, Canticle 19 on page 94. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail, fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now we will say the Apostles' Creed together, followed by the Our Father and Suffragist A. The Apostles' Creed begins on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. <clears throat> Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, you have called us to be your children and have promised that those who suffer with Christ will be heirs with him in your glory. Arm us with such trust in him that we may ask no rest from his demands and have no fear in his service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you gave your servant, Thomas Ken, grace and courage to bear witness to the truth before rulers and kings. Give us strength also that we may constantly defend what is right, boldly reprove what is evil, and patiently suffer for the truth's sake. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. 
so close us in your spirit that we, reaching forth your hand, our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. Amen. And now we come to the, um, the prayers, the daily prayers for the Church of the Atonement for this week of March 17th. Um, as I say these prayers, really, please feel free to add your own, either aloud or uh, silently at home. Um, if you wish me to say them out loud, just write them in the chat section and I will get to them. For the sick, for those in need or trouble, and for those who have asked for our prayers, especially Paul, Jacob, Jolene, Jeremiah, Melissa, Katie, David, Beth, Susan, Sean, Kate H., Jonathan Devon, Matthew, Ron B., Judy B., <clears throat> Jerry C., Brad, Mary, Killian, Dennis, former President Carter, Mary, Arun, all with COVID-19, Elizabeth, Jim, Cecilia, Charlie, Edward, Kelly, Anna H., Ann R., Bill, Connie, Larry, Eleanor, Francis, a religious, <clears throat> Ken, a deacon, Thomas and Greg, priests, Richard, a pat praster, Michael and Rodney, bishops, Rodney having surgery on the 19th of this month. For peace in the Middle East, in Haiti, Ukraine, Russia, Mali, Iran, the Red Sea, and Myanmar. For an end to violence and division in our neighborhood, city, and nation. For those who are traveling, for the unemployed, and for those seeking work. For those struggling with depression, anxiety, or addiction. And for the work of Care for Real, Care for Friends, <clears throat> and all whom they serve. For all healthcare workers, For all healthcare workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K., Larry, Kieran, <clears throat> Lee, Harry, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily. For all families and children in this city and state. For all expectant parents and for all prisoners. For members of our military services on active duty, especially Celeste and Nate, and for Scott serving as security in Iraq. For Paula, our bishop, Charles, our rector, Amanda and Dave, our wardens, and for the members of our vestry. For Eric and Rachel as they prepare for baptism. For those celebrating birthdays this week, Arlen Boyer, Patricia Statler, Jim Clark, Michael Gonzalez, Aiden, Caden, and Joseph Eichenlaub, Richard Labley, Isaac Ria, and for the wedding anniversary of Frank and the Reverend Pack Eichenlaub. <coughs> we pray for the souls of the departed. Dory Ann Ladner, 11-year-old Jaden Perkins, <coughs> Dan Wakefield, and Tom Giroux. <laughs> and at the anniversaries of their deaths, for Anna Howerton, Miller Cragen Jr., a priest, James Alexander, Edwin Moore Bennett, Lena Downey, Harriet Betty Givens, James Rice, Earl Bronson, Anna Ferguson, Margaret Rice. A prayer for peace. Dear God, we realize we are limited in what we can do to help create peace in faraway places, but that people may be more sensitive to the leadings of your spirit, and especially the leaders of the various countries where there is conflict. That peace can become a reality among people and nations, that wars will cease, striving for power will be replaced by love and understanding for one's neighbor. Help us in this endeavor, dear God. <clears throat> we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Let us continue with the general thanksgiving. Page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom we have made. 
whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. <clears throat> And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all, all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout age, all ages. <clears throat> Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God. <clears throat> Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. That concludes morning prayer for this Thursday in the fifth week of Lent in the commemoration of I forgot his now now I forgot his name. Um, Bishop Ken. Thank you for joining us. We'll be here again tomorrow morning and every morning at 8 30 a.m. on Google Meet. Um, today there is a mass at noon and a, and a mass tomorrow morning at 7 30. And don't forget that on this is the last Friday for Stations of the Cross followed by a reflection and benediction of the sacrament beginning at 7 p.m. in the church. Um, before that, there is a, um, a, a soup supper beginning at six o'clock. Um, Palm Sunday and Holy Week are coming up and there is a full list of services and their times on our website. So take good care, it looks like another chilly spring day out there good for the daffodils which are coming up all over the city um god bless you and goodbye <laughs>